new week an exciting week and we want to hope and pray that this week can be successful and i mean <laughs> we saw the result yesterday liverpool losing for the very first time in the premier league at home as now losing also at home so and i mean we know the reason we know the cause for this it's the cup matches as i told you guys whenever we have these cup games and these teams have to play again in the Premier League. It's always a mess. It's constantly a mess because it's very difficult to play on Wednesday and also be at optimal levels to play on Saturday again. Very, very difficult. But it is what it is. And it's for that reason we need to look at the matches we have today critically from a different angle. We have to look at things from a very different angle in order to see how we can return to winning ways again. Uh, it's, it's not going to be an easy period going forward until this Champions League um, uh, quarterfinals or whatever round it's in and, and the Europa League rounds are over. So we, we, we've taken the handicap market today and the over two goals market to try and win uh, two plus odds. And we are very, very hopeful of success today. And if you are new to the channel, please do well to like the video, do well to subscribe to this channel, and do well to join our Telegram channel. It's pinned in the comment section. So the game we have here is a very crucial game, a game involving Chelsea and Everton. And while this game is very huge, especially for Everton, is Everton needs a positive result from this game in order to continue their fight for Premier League survivors. So, and it's interesting that when you look at um, Everton, they haven't really considered three goals in their last five away games. So even when they've lost, they hardly conceded three or more goals. So even when they lost to Bournemouth, it ended 2-1. When they played even the likes of Manchester City, a very strong opposition, it ended 2-0. Right. So you look further, and the last time that they considered two or more goals was when they played Wolves. And this one can be attributed to the fact that it was during the festive period. You know, a lot of players were still celebrating the Christmas, the New Year, and a whole lot of stuff. But whenever they are at optimal levels, like when they played Tottenham a couple of days before the New Year, uh, you know, it ended to us. You know, they didn't concede three goals. You take a look at this Chelsea team. This Chelsea team too isn't really blowing teams away, right? They aren't really blowing teams away, as I said. Um, there hasn't been any team in their last five games that they have beaten by three goals. There hasn't been any team that they have beaten by three goals or more. Right? Even when they played Leicester in the FA Cup, the goal difference was just two in their last five matches. You extend further. Right, you extend further, and literally, there, 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 there hasn't been any game in the Premier League in their last 10 matches that they have beaten any team by three or more goals. And given the fact that Chelsea doesn't need this game, to be honest, um, Chelsea is already sure of their fate. Um, I don't think at this point they will think they can qualify for anything tangible. Because I think the season is well over for them. So what that means is only one team will be more motivated, and that's Everton. Everton is just two points above the relegation waters, and, and it's dangerous. So Everton will want to do everything to pick a maximum result. So what are we saying? We are giving Everton a three goals handicap. We are saying even if Everton loses this game, they are not going to lose by three or more goals. So the odd for a 3-0 handicap for Everton is 1.70. The next fixture is a game involving Nancy and Matix. So it's interesting that when you look at this uh, Nancy team, this Nancy team does excellently well at home. In fact, the last time Nancy lost a game at home was in September. That was the last time. They lost a home game. It's nearly getting to one year since this team lost a game at home. Matix away from home has lost three times in the last five away games. 
head to head because it's always a close call always always a close call so you take a look at their standings when you take a look at their standings you see that this uh, martin's team is position three they're waiting the nancy is position six trying to push into the top three places so given nancy's excellent home record where they've only lost once at home and that was in september there's every reason to believe that this is not going to be an easy ride for Martin. So what we are predicting is we are giving Nancy. Let's let's assume that Matix even gets to beat Nancy. Right? We are saying that even if Nancy, the home team, loses this match, they're not going to lose by up to two goals. Their current form head to head definitely suggests that this is not a match that Nancy will lose by up to two goals. So the odd for a 2-0 handicap for Nancy is priced at 1.15. The next fixture we have is from um, the Denmark League. It's a game involving Seikeborg and Nordjylland. So when you look at the home team, I think it's Silberg. Okay, or it was Silberg or whatever. So when you look at this Silberg team, um five matches played and there has been another four out of their last five matches has produced 2.5 goals interestingly has produced 2.5 goals i mean the home team the away team even um four out of their last five matches too have produced two or more goals but then this is where it's interesting yeah head to head shows that their four out of their last five matches has produced 2.5 goals every time. It's also interesting we check their standings, and when you do, you see that the away team is position four, right? It's a cup game, there, but it's position four, and they're trying to do everything possible to push up the uh, table. Then you have this home team that is position six. So this is going to be very, very interesting. And we definitely expect that Nordjylland should have everything in there to score two or more goals and the home team to also grab a goal in the course of this match. So the prediction is simple. They are head-to-head -head matches. Their current goal scoring form suggests that this is a match that will produce goals. So we are going with the option of over two goals. And they're out for over two goals is 1.30 and finally we have this last game from the turkey super league it's a game involving alan Yespo and galatasaray so alan Yespo is averaging a minimum of 2.5 goals at home whenever they play galatasaray is also averaging 2.5 goals in fact four out of their last five matches have produced two or more goals so this is going to be a very, very interesting fixture. Head-to-head -head shows that these games always produce 2.5 goals, four out of their last five times. It's also important we check the standings to see how competitive this match will be, especially for Galatasaray. Galatasaray is position two. Uh, they need to win this game to get back to the top. That's how important this game is, because they need to win the early. So they're not going to joke. They're not going to joke. So we are going with the option of over two goals, and the odd is 1.17. And of course, we have the different booking codes there. One is better than the spot bet. And I just want to wish you guys nothing but the very best with this round of matches. Thank you very much, guys. And all the best. Despite initial reports suggesting Pope Jr. was promptly taken to the hospital after his drowning, a new video circulating from Instablog reveals a different story. The footage shows Pope Jr. being held inside the Hilux for over an hour, while those present, instead of rushing him to the hospital, seemed more focused on filming for clout. That's not even the main point. Stay tuned for the next three minutes as we share with you alarming details of how Pope Jr. was tragically murdered. On March 2, the well-known internet whistleblower, Anonymous, 
publicly revealed that Pope Jr., a Nollywood actor, was marked for elimination due to intense jealousy within the industry. Interestingly, Anonymous had previously accurately predicted the death of Access Bank CEO, Herbert Wigwi. This revelation raises the question, what could possibly make Pope Jr. a target of envy in Nollywood? Pope Jr. stood out in Nollywood, not as the typical struggling actor, but as a success story. With two completed mansions and a collection of cars, his journey from humble beginnings to success was remarkable. Unlike many of his peers with multiple children from different relationships, Pope Jr. was a committed family man, married to a beautiful woman with three children. He led a drama-free life, seemingly having it all. Could his undeniable success and stable family life have stirred envy among his colleagues? Was this envy the motive behind the tragic boat accident that claimed his life? This leads us to our next point. The live video Pope Jr. streamed from the boat captures a tense exchange between him and the boat paddler. Pope Jr. urgently asks the paddler to navigate cautiously, showing genuine concern for everyone's safety. However, the paddler seems indifferent, showing no response to Pope Jr.'s pleas. He deliberately wears an earpiece, ensuring he doesn't hear Pope Jr.'s warnings. Was this intentional? Could the paddler have been instructed to paddle recklessly, wear an earpiece, and ignore Pope Jr.'s concerns? T. C. Okafor, a survivor of the boat accident, supports our account of events. He credited pouring Fonta and money into the river for his survival. Okafor also pointed out that the accident resulted from the inexperienced person steering the boat. In response to the tragedy, the Actors Guild of Nigeria, Regien, has acted swiftly. They've suspended the film's producer, Adan Maluk, and banned film shoots in riverine locations. Additionally, the film Another Side of Life has been indefinitely postponed by the Guild. Heartbreakingly, Junior Pope didn't survive the tragic accident. The search for the remaining three missing individuals Abigail Frederick, Vice Chairman of Customer Designers Guild of Nigeria, Precious Oforum, Sound Engineer, and Joseph Anointing has been completed as the Nollywood community and supporters assembled in significant numbers at the riverside. 